Yo, First Smoke family, today we got a special episode for you guys. The Emerald Kid, straight from Humboldt County. He's going to bring you in the day of the life at the Turp Mansion. <laughs> But before we get into that, man, make sure you smash the like button if you're rocking with us. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Who should we do next? Who should we bring on the show next? Let us know in the comments below. We appreciate the support. And also, go to FSOTV.com. If you need merch, gear, our rolling trays, any of the stuff you guys see us have on the show, it's on FSOTV.com. We appreciate you guys. Also, what else? We have a bunch of codes on there, one of them being for GrowGeneration.com. If you need grow supplies, if you want to get into the grow business, if you need supplies surrounding anything to do with the grow business, growgeneration.com, in store or online, 60 plus stores nationwide. Use our code FIRSTSMOKE10. Also, if you're not happy the way your nutrients are tasting in your flower, you don't like the way your flower's looking, a lot of people all the it. above. If it ain't smoking, let us know. Shoot us an email, family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know, I want to try Drip Hydro. We will get you set up with Drip Hydro so you can start rocking that nutrient line. Also, big shout out Mood Tray, someone that we've been using nonstop on a lot of our devices. We really like how quick the turnarounds are. They have everything from grinders to rolling trays to ashtrays. One of the homies as well, you guys already know. Hit up Mood Trays. We have a code on FSOTD.com for that as well. Go on the site. We have codes for all the partner people we work with. Trust me, you want to use the code. It gets you priority and it gets you noticed and it gets you a discount. Yo, and shout out to Dr. Dabber, drdabber.com. Go on the site, see the latest code for Dr. Dabber. We're on the excess. And, you know, without any further ado, man. Emerald Kid. That's a good one. I'm in sight. Hang tight. Make sure you watch it and smash that like. And then Turt Mansion too is like organic. You know, I made so much oil at my house, so I was just like Turt Mansion. People would call it Turt Mansion before my brand was Turt Mansion. A lot of these big companies don't even grow weed. They're just brands buying from people like us. Nine out of 10 of their ideas might not be the greatest idea, but it's that 10th idea that saves you a bunch of money, saves their happiness, like hold, you know. Yo, what's good, everybody? We're back, man. It's first smoke of the day, episode 96 today. It's your boy, Pack in the building. I'm here with my co-host, Blackleaf. Smoking. Big Zushi gang in the building. And our man, the one and only, the Emerald Kid, baby. <laughs> Turp Mansion. Turp Mansion. And we've been waiting to, yeah. to, to come in and do this for real. Thanks, guys. We've definitely been following, and we love what you do, bro. Appreciate it. See, I couldn't wait to start the light the hash hole. So yeah, <laughs> you what came packing with hash hole. Light up over there. I see what you guys. So I just lit up before we even started. Right here, I got the space kit. In. That's what I lit up. Yeah, yeah. I got. The, I brought that and the Krispy Kreme for you guys to try. Hash holes for the hash holes. Yeah, I got some other stuff. We can make our own hash holes. And this one's Gelato Forty One Animal Mints Cross for flour, and then rosin is Oreos times runs. Yes, that is that one. And what's the what's the cross on that one? So this one is Thin Mint GSC flour with strawberry Oreos rosin. Dude, get out of here with that! Crazy. I think I like the uh, Space Cadet more personally, but um, they're both really good. Yeah, true. Really try good. them both. Yeah. yeah, and I was saying earlier on off the mic that uh, I like how you wrote on there to the directions. Yeah, light it for twenty to thirty seconds yep. at least, then inhale. Get that little cherry forming, you know, and. Don't suck uh, butane through your <laughs> 50, 60, 80 dollar <laughs> cash hole. <laughs> Just light it and you know enjoy it. It's gonna last a while. Might as well light it for thirty. Light it for a while too. <laughs> I'm all impatient and shit. You right. can't rush the experience. I see so many people just hold in the joint to their mouth and suck in the flame through the joint, not realizing that it literally roasts all the crystals and terps from the joint. It basically strips it. And you're not going to get an evenly burning joint like that either. Yeah. If your paper runs on one of these things, you know, it's, yeah. Whoops. There goes 80 bucks or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ball and day, man. That was a waste. Yeah. <laughs> nah, but these are amazing. Rolled really nice. So um, I roll. It's funny because my team preps them. I roll every single one of these. 
That's Everyone fire. Is, yeah. That's cool to know. We'll press them out. The team will like lay them out, lay the tips on them. And then I'll just go there and it takes me like one minute to each one. Just <laughs> yeah. I have a buddy that just uh, finally came back working with me again, Jordan, who's starting to help me, but all of these are rolled by me. <laughs> I used to wow. love watching your page. That's my favorite project. When you guys would put the, uh, the rollers up when you would do soil pots yep. and it would be, cause I hadn't seen that too much. And I know like some big ag places do that, but for you guys to do it in such like a high end setting for cannabis and the way you're, you know, the turt mansion set up the property, it was just so cool seeing you guys have the pots just going from all the way through out and yeah. then it just it's such a dope process to watch on your yeah. page bro we the first time we harvested we did it without those and uh it uh basically destroyed the whole team's backs no, you know it was like two three days of like you know you pinch in pots like this and your hands and backs are just dead so i took the profit from the first run and bought <laughs> conveyor belts <laughs> and you know like yeah it's it's now it's a breeze like people love that day because it's literally easy because this yeah. is all you're doing <laughs> well and for people that don't know it's like it's almost like ladders right picture like a ladder that stands sideways and it's just a conveyor belt and they can put them at any angle and they just connect them like blocks so you can send it wherever you're going 200 feet that way 300 so they'd be going around curves around this just straight to the other side of the property yeah, right and then the be able way. to and all you do is just, same thing with transplanting send the pots this way and they just start going and then they're all staggered so you're like putting the plant like it's just really cool process to see as a grower and as like anyone that likes like how would you scale a business like this because what you got going on is impressive bro appreciate like, it yeah that's that's definitely one of my favorite things is conveyor belt day <laughs> yeah take us all the way back man how did how did you get how did this all come about because it's pretty clever and you know you are the emerald kid you know so that name everyone just called me the kid right so like i didn't incorporate my business so yeah. when i was like 22 i was like i need to make a business name because i was about to apply for my licenses so then it became the emerald kid because i was just a kid you know so that's where that came from and then tur mansion too is like organic you know i made so much oil at my house so i was just like tur mansion people would call it tur mansion before my brand was tur mansion so that's it kind of both of those names were like organic um but i started uh you know i just sold weed in high school and then had one light in my mom's attic until she found out the second run <laughs> and then uh, moved up to Humboldt for college. Um, and I started, you know, I lived, I got a little house instead of staying on campus because it was actually cheaper to get a house year round than stay on campus for nine months, you know? So plus I didn't want to go back and live with my parents when I was first summer and shit. I wanted all my shit and my bong and like all my stuff. So then I started with six lights and then just like slowly worked up from there, made oil um bought my property in willow creek before legalization um so i i kind of got lucky on that i knew that ag land was going to be like the uh you know where you're, you're going to be allowed to do some shit on ag land but i didn't know that one i didn't know how rare the ag land was in humboldt and two i didn't know that i would be able to like vertically integrate like to where i am now you know so um that was definitely lucky um and also you know i was told no a bunch while i was trying to do that whole process and kind of just like showing county officials and stuff but this is actually what the laws you guys wrote say so actually i can do all this it was just because there was no one had done it before you know so damn so pioneered your way into that situation then, i think basically. there's like five micro businesses in humble and there's definitely only one on a homestead which because i like live on my farm you know it's part of the reason why it's turt mansion too it's my house yeah <laughs> yeah um, but i think the other four i think three of them are dispensaries and one of them uh only one other of the micro businesses grows weed in humble so wow the way yours is set up though, for any grower, in my opinion, or someone who loves cannabis, it's like the prime setup. It's like a paradise. Yeah. It's like you have, you know, I don't know if you mind, explain, but it's like a beautiful house with the pool. You got the setup woods around you. Then on the side, you got the greenhouses, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, beautiful greenhouses, yeah. high end greenhouses, sure. bro. Yes. I appreciate it. And then you had for a while, you had a couple outdoor plants, full sun. Mm -hmm. That was got to do your personal six, right? Yes. You know, cause why not? <laughs> it's California. Yeah. You're you, the way you do your personal six though, is the epitome of a personal yeah, six. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> you gotta yeah. Talk about it. You got to get follow. those things big. We Christmas definitely trees. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. We, we'll pop them in like February, you know, sometimes January and um start them in a little mini outdoor greenhouse and plant them by may and you know they'll be uh head high by 
July where people usually say knee high by July or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, they'll, they'll end up being at least, you know, eight, nine, 10 pounders plus for sure. And monsters. now you're talking rosin strains, some good rosin strains. Yeah, strain so we use things. that. I mean, I use all the space, I, especially mm -hmm. before I part, uh, started doing all these new farms I'm doing now, I use that space uh, to like test new rosin strains and stuff. Cause I knew it was, you know, I got all this mixed light and indoor. Outdoor, I'm just gonna wash it. And mm -hmm. you know, each plant was like 20 to 30,000 grams frozen. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, and I have two properties next to each other. So I'd end up with like, you know, 250,000 grams of frozen from 12 plants from your legal, wow. from my legal six and that's what, property. But that's cool to be able to show people like that can be done. Yeah. yeah. That's the goal. And plus, you know how to care for plants. So, you know, going into it, like, okay, if this happens outside with these bugs or this happens yeah. with this mold, this is how we do this. And like, to master that is is just at the epitome, yeah. in my opinion, of like uh, where you're going as an artist. Appreciate it. For yeah. sure. How did you, but like, where are you from originally? Uh, so I grew up in Petaluma. I uh, uh, like Santa Rosa, Petaluma, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sonoma County, and then moved up to Humboldt for college. Um, I was born in New Hampshire, but when I was four, I moved out, out here. So pretty much, you know, born and raised in California. And did you have some, when you got to Humboldt, uh, you went out there obviously with the passion of like, I like weed or I love weed and yeah, I see what this is about. Kind of. I, I went for school. Um, I, w I got into San Diego state too. I went towards San Diego state and, uh, uh, like send traffic for like three hours. And then also, uh, there's like bars on the snack machines. And those were like two things from deterred me from going to San Diego state. I was like, why is there bars? I can't get it. Like there's this, you know, there's a Twix bar behind that fucking bars on this. Thing. I'm like, I'm not going to school here. So I went to Humboldt. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no bars yeah. on the Twix machine. There ain't that's no for bars sure. on the machines. For yeah. you, know, you can't break into the candy machines. There. When you got out there, uh, you started well, like, how does it go then? Do you seek out some knowledge from some, some guys uh, yeah. that got the best weed? Yeah, or just like slowly met people kind of through like the glass scene at first because I was like really into the rigs and stuff. Um, so I met some of the glass blowers and then um, I was already making oil, already selling, you know, bringing stuff back to Petaluma. Mm -hmm. um, but from that, just uh, slowly met people and just, you know, started with six lights and then eventually had another house with 17 and made oil and um, just kept going from there, basically. It's amazing to hear that from ground up. How do you, like when you're going into the property you're at now and stuff, did you go into that knowing that like, hey, I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to squeeze everything I can out of this and, and max this situation and then roll a brand into it? Or did you just start kind of doing it and then decide, let me, let me, you know. I definitely just started kind of doing it. Um, right when I bought the property, the laws weren't finalized. So I didn't know what I could, I could do in Humboldt. Laws came out like, I want to say like eight or nine months after I bought my property. And it's like ag land, boom, one to five acres. You can do 5,000 square foot of mixed light. So I was like, boom, 5,000 square foot of mixed light. Um, so that's what I went for. Before my application was finalized, they changed the indoor law in Humboldt to where if you had a pre-existing structure um, on ag land, the other types of land, um, you know, it was all different, TPZ, all the other commercial, whatever. But on ag land, I had a pre-existing shop not attached to my residence. So boom, they're like, you can, that can be an indoor. So then right away, it was indoor mixed light. Um, I thought that's what it was going to be, you know. Um, but then Humboldt County rolled out the, like the 2.0. Um, and with that, there was a micro business provision that I could like kind of fell under. Um, it took a lot of convincing to like convince them that I fell under it. Um, because it was new. No one had seen anything like that. Like, um, how'd you convince them? Just going through the regulations and showing like this is qualifies basically. So basically going up to the city and yeah, talking going to into the, the county and you know, like the reason why I got my shit, f uh, through so quick is because I would go there like every three days, like all like nonstop, 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 nonstop. And I, that I feel like is, was a huge, you know, uh, everyone knew me there because I would just go in and like bug them, you know, where like it was hard for a lot of other farmers because it involves all this other paperwork and like stuff that's like, you know, it's kind of hard when you've been growing weed on the hill for 20 years to like get into all that type of stuff. So that's where like I had every time they asked me for something, I like went home and got it and brought it back, you know, like right away Yeah, or already had it. So that's where like I, you know, got my shit through so fast. 
You just kept coming up here. I just like, kept coming. Gotta get like, this I got to get out of here. Yeah. Persistence is key. They wanted always, me out of there. <laughs> they wanted like, me out of him there. approved. Yeah. Get him the stamp, whatever the hell he needs. Well, and they start to care for your outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, you start to relate. Yes. To the process. My yeah. stepdad. Everybody's been through struggles and shit. Yeah. Of like trying to do something. My stepdad always says that like one of the best things in business you can do is meet someone face to face and shake their hand or at least meet them because now when they're going to stamp that approval or that denial or when they, they can put a face to an application or a face to print and it's a, you think twice, it's a little different no matter what. He's always like, if you're going to do business with this person, no matter where they are in the world, like fly to them and shake their hand in person. He's like, the relationship will be completely different one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Damn, so that's that's impressive. So you had already got the property, and then you're just like, as as licensing and everything's p- coming down, you're like, all right, let me let me see what I can do with this. Yeah. So I just slowly, you know, I built my indoor first, made money with that, built the uh, next gen that we call the spaceship, made money off that, bought the next door property, <laughs> built two greenhouses there, made money off that, built the processing building. Um, And then once I had the processing building, that's really where like, I was not just a farm anymore. You know, like I literally could start doing all of this right here, all the packaging, all the extraction, um, you know, the distro, like all that. Um, There's tons of like crazy stuff that I had to do to like get all that. Like I have a, at my house, I have a handicapped parking spot because like, that's part of (laughs) having a, you know, like I have to have a handicapped parking spot. So I literally have a handicapped parking spot at my house. Like an eyewash station, like, you know, like it's crazy. They just keep giving you lists of things yeah, yeah. and you're just having a, and you're yeah. on it. I was the first next gen in Humboldt. So like they'd never seen a building like that. That thing took me like a year to get through the county, like to, with all, you know, like they're like wow. asking for stuff that doesn't even apply like title 24s. And it's like, it's a greenhouse for plants. It's not for like, you know, a title 24 is like you would do for a commercial building, not like mm-hmm. where people are working and not for plants. So it's like. You know, and then I'm having to go to the engineer company and have them write a letter saying it doesn't apply. <laughs> so the county believes me <laughs> that it doesn't apply. <laughs> Persistence. So, yeah. Yo, family, if you want to know where to get all the dope exclusive merch you see us rocking on the show, go to shop.fsotd.com. It's free shipping on all domestic orders. We're trying to hook up the whole family. We want you guys to rock the merch and show us you're a part of the family. All the ashtrays are on there. The lighters are on there. The trays are on there. The stonewash hoodie is on there the family ties tea is sold out you should have moved quicker um and also <laughs> yo tag us in photos let us know you're rocking the merch you're rolling up on the tray you're watching first smoke of the day.com let us know how you first smoke of the day hit us up on instagram first smoke of the day yeah where do you get that from um i don't know i just have always been that way i guess my mom's very persistent she's always been like you, you know, have to do it you have yeah, to be on it yeah sure keep going for sure yeah so. persistence go, uh, goes alongside of persuasion mm-hmm. they go hand in hand yeah mm-hmm. if you're persistent you can persuade yeah because people realize like oh, okay this person's not going to stop let, yeah. me, let me just go ahead and help them yeah it's a lot easier to just yeah and i it's think the people slacking that it's easy to yeah and i think at first off. like the county and stuff didn't maybe like that but once they realized like wow all these you other people well. aren't answering so once this guy actually has a permit he's still gonna like answer all the time like let's just like give him whatever he wants <laughs> you know because which is crazy because like that's just how life works and like you said they're asking for shit they don't even, doesn't even exist because they don't exist. even know what they're really doing yeah everyone thinks there's like this finite system in place for all yeah. the shit to take place in, in the world oh no it's not it's all of the people and whoever you're talking to yeah literally figuring it out it's crazy yeah and when you say spaceship for people that don't know and we're going to insert yeah, some okay. videos and stuff it's yeah. literally like a spaceship when it's mm-hmm. turning on and the, if you if it's running past sundown yeah it's a spaceship for sure yeah. it's definitely yeah we got the green lights in there we got every it has everything you know it's a yeah it's a state-of-the-art building for sure give us give us yeah. like an explanation of of what it is so it's a next-gen greenhouse 50 by 96 50 feet wide 96 long um it's got as far as the structure goes bug screen roof vents um wall fans wet wall um interior rolling benches um runs off a a weather station so like all the controls will run off based on like what the outside temperature and humidity is and stuff because uh 
you know, that's, it's pulling in and especially year round where like you're running through all these different climates. It's not just an indoor, it's not set it or forget it. You know, like it is different in February than it is in the summer. Um, so it runs on a lot more um, advanced controls for sure. Like I'm um, computer programming in there. Absolutely. How hard is it to find help? Good help. Um, where I, uh, in Willow Creek, it's, it's kind of hard cause it's a small town, mm -hmm. especially now that we're expanding a lot. But, um, I have a core group of like all my homies that have been with me from way before legalization. And, um, that's honestly the reason why I feel like, you know, it's all about the team. That's why we are like where we're at. That's why I can be here today and not be there when we're doing so much. Um, because, um, I have a really good core group of guys. Um, the hardest thing to find out there is really good people for the office. You can always find good labor stuff, but like um, office type stuff, you know, in a town where there's like 2000 people, it's like most people are just used to doing labor and like those types of jobs that can be kind of hard to find for sure. Young entrepreneur, man inspiring uh, i was following you guys back in the day and like also seeing around some of the other growers you you started around and uh or basically og mendo guys and og yeah, so humble many. guys yeah, it was lots. really inspiring yeah. to see how young you are and how they also looked up to you and you guys were working I, just really cool to see man just Appreciate different it. than what most people are used to especially living up there and having that set up is a, it's a dream setup Appreciate it. You when basically was, build your dream. Yeah. When I was 19, I moved behind Sam uh, in Trinidad, Sam from Soilscape Solutions, the owner of Soilscape Solutions. So he was like the first like real like, you know, and he's the Soilscape Solutions guy. So all the growers, you know, and me and Sam just, you know, I looked up to Sam since, you know, right when I moved behind him and we just started, I, he started letting me do stuff and help him with stuff. And uh, um, yeah, Sam's the man. So they were like all kinds of growers, OG guys coming through to get soil. Yeah. Cause they yeah. have specially mixed soil for mm -hmm. their property, all that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Damn. What were some of the strains when you first started you were growing? <sighs> like Gorilla Glue, um, stuff like that. Uh, uh, key Lime Pie, Purple Punch, mm -hmm. um, Sour Tangy, um, some OGs, some headbands. I miss really good grown Gorilla Glue. Yeah. That was a good strain that got burned out quick. A, my six light tent was, uh, uh, that was one of the main strains I would just do over and over and over and over. Um, yeah, it got burned out quick. <laughs> yeah. But back then, you know, it was, couldn't mess with it for sure. When you're, when you're starting that young, when did you start to like, like how, how did you make the leap from where you were into like, Hey, I'm going to buy this property and I'm all in on my dreams and I'm, I'm betting on me. Cause that's where you really went right. Yeah, for sure. And I had a lot of people like, telling me not to, cause I was working with a couple other big companies where I like, I had small percentages in yeah. and, um, you know, they're like, Oh, we're going to have this massive fucking thing, facility, whatever. Like, why do you need to do that? And I was just like, I don't know. I was making money and I didn't like that's instead of buying a new truck every year, I would just like, I felt like I should invest in something. Reinvesting to yourself. So like, you know, I, yeah, that's what I did. That bro, you by instinct, you just did what was right. And that's reinvesting in yourself, double down on you because yeah. it's left up to nobody else then. And obviously you have the persistence, Yeah, you know, and, and some of the, like, you know, some of the things like the greenhouse taking a year and stuff like that, it almost. Of course it like sucked, but also, you know, like I was slowly paying for this thing over a long time versus like, boom, massive investment, you know? So that definitely like helped. It's just like slowly adding to it, slowly adding to it, slowly, um, expanding mm -hmm. and grow as you, as you, you know, are, are building and you didn't, you didn't need to go on and take any, you know, crazy investment yeah. or anything on the front end. You just kind of went as you went. Plus that's how you learn, you know? Yeah. hundred like, percent. You learn slowly, you build it up versus like, boom. And then. <laughs> yeah. You, you really don't know what you're doing at that point. Yeah. Now you're dealing with a big, a lot of money. Yeah. And then you got a lot of pressure on you. No. Smart how you've done it. How long has it been? How many years has it been? So, well, I started like if we, I moved to Humble in 2012. So I basically consider it right then, you know? Yep. Um, and you started years, seeing the lifestyle, meeting people, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is the epicenter. Shout out to fucking Humble. Yeah, Humble. And Trinidad is beautiful, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I got fire. very lucky to live there for that's a fire. while. Yeah, yeah. 
right there by the Bonham White House. House and Willow Creek. I still had those properties for like a year. They were rentals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was even sad to get rid of them, but it was, you know, still an hour away. So I was, yeah. I start doing the Willow Creek thing. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's still up there. And I already know that like investing in the properties is a smart, smart thing because those build equity too. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, so for sure. every, every year I see my property taxes are more. God damn it. They're more, but also the value is more. So, yeah. But yeah. It's um, cool though. Your ag property and what you've built on there, it's like a triple whammy. We've got to do a farm tour in Humboldt. We got you we guys. We got to do it. Yeah. So, talk about yeah. you people. People come out there and, and I do tours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I do oh. tours. Um, uh, it was kind of like right before my micro business got permitted for a year. I went really hard on them because I was like, I mean, nothing else to do is before I could like make oil and stuff. So, right. we were just farm turning over runs. Um, so yeah, we do tours. Um, I do two different types of tours. I do a business tour, which was going heavy that year because people kind of were all, you know, trying to get their things going and all that. That's smart. Um, so yeah, business tour. And then I would do um, just like a consumer tour um, where one, the consumer tour is like two hours. It's quick, you know, and then I got to try a bunch of products on my site. And then the business tour, they could try products if they want, but it was really more going through each grow room, each um, you know space one at a time and showing them all my controls, showing them what I'm feeding and, you know, fully everything. I showed them literally everything because I charged, I charged a thousand bucks a ticket for the business store. Yeah. And that's I, a steal. It's worth 10,000. Yes. So, you know, because if you take that information and even halfway apply it, you're going to be in a, a profitable situation. Yeah. The way you, the way you do what you do is very efficient. That's on the other side of persistence is efficiency. And you're a, an efficient person that is maximizing everything you have going on. I can tell. Mm -hmm. That's what I nerd out on is the efficiencies of everything. That's like my master's degree is in strategic sustainability from Humboldt State. So I nerd out on all the efficiencies for sure. That's what I, I had to like to figure out and you, do. This is the first thing you notice is like well put together, meaning you do it efficiently and you're maximizing though too you're not simplifying and doing it efficiently yeah. you're maximizing and yeah. doing it efficiently which is high standard you know yeah. high rate of of growth too it's fucking impressive yeah. man for and real caring about the people that are doing that with you too is really important like I learned, I learned employee turnover and i see it with all the other you know all the other stuff i was involved with employer turnover is what kills like a business especially in cannabis you can't be retraining these people all the time you know you got to be making the moves showing them you're making the moves to like save their backs by buying conveyor belts and do that you know like other places don't do that true leadership and you got to budget properly That's, yeah to do those types of moves because like you said if you're out going and getting the brand new truck every year you you can't keep up no you're not buying the conveyor belts because those cost as much as the brand new truck <laughs> For sure. Maybe more. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the guys that are making it right now that are still swinging to the fences and shit, mm -hmm. they're all guys like you in that sense of like, no, business first. I'll worry about my yeah. shit. That'll come later. Yeah. Buy the Not LEDs, right the new 200 LEDs or the Maybach. 200 LEDs, Maybach. <laughs> you know, 200 LEDs Maybach lower, ain't gonna work you lower out your fucking Creek. electric bill. <laughs> yeah, Maybach ain't shit. gonna work out in Willow Creek either. I would <laughs> that love shit that. ain't gonna work out. <laughs> nah. They'd be like, damn, oh, we got a new buyer in town. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's the Sheesh. Emerald King, boy. <laughs> boy, yeah. you come out there in the Maybach, they're gonna be upset, I'm not coming man. for their weed, though. Everything really gonna be coming straight down the <laughs> They're going to they're gonna say, man, we got to get this boy a talking to. Yeah, Pull up so and you're fun. like, uh, what are you looking for this property? Right. <laughs> I'm here for all your used grow equipment. Yeah. <laughs> damn, yeah. damn. Fucking yeah. hey, man. man. So What's talk, up? Talk about the, the, the purple and the, mm -hmm. and the gold and the packaging and the branding. I came up with the purple and the yellow because I thought it was bold. I was like trying to pick colors for my, for my shit a long time ago and I picked it and then we were dabbing out of a uh, bluegrass um jared DeLong rig um and it was a purple and yellow swirl rig and after i picked it i realized we were smoking out of a purple and yellow rig and i was like all right that's set yeah <laughs> so that's, that's kind of just you know so yeah that's fire no uh, yeah so talk to us man about uh some of these products and stuff the live rosin i wanted to bring joe humble joe but he's sick right now so i couldn't bring him um he makes all the hash i've known joe for since i moved to humble basically um he He's 60 years old. He just turned 60. So he's been in the game for a while. He's wow. been making hash since I was fucking not a negative something, you know? <laughs> um, 
Um, so yeah, this is type two Turk mentioned on the top of the castle. Yeah, it's all uh, yeah. printed on there, or whatever. There's some fresh press. There's some stuff that's uh, cured. There's turp me, turp you, turp me, turp you. We got a couple different sayings on the oh, inside right. of the low, you know, inside of the boxes to make it fun. That's a baller bucket. That's yeah. That's Ooh. not a gram. <laughs> that's a lot. I was that's like, more. hell yeah. Yeah. I was trying to, I flew down. So I was trying to bring enough without, you know, like I said earlier, TSA, um, taking it, but enough to bring to show you guys. Just tell me <laughs> you're the Emerald kid, bro. Yeah, yeah for real. Yeah, right. And then I'm interested in some of these strawberry jams. I keep yeah, staring that's at a, this one. Uh, oh, strawberry, cool. what is that? Strawberries and cream by Runtz. Um, oh, yeah, that smells Kristen great. Kristen from man. Finest. I got that. I got that smells ones. great, this man. PBS is crazy. It just tested ridiculous, these test results now. It's like 40%, uh, 4% terps. This, yeah, but it's really good. I, I have a small indoor, too, and I always get... Um, with the same strain, I always get higher terpene tests from the mix light. Really? For sure. Okay. That one's Damn. pretty nice. This one look, looks crazy. The grape animal. It's grape pie by animal. Oh, cookies. yeah. Woo. Gassy. It's very, yeah. I like Peanut butter souffle. Super gas. Cami. Nice. What's your go-to flower smoke? Right now, I like that gel trop. It's kind of crazy. Um... And then probably that PBS, the peanut butter souffle. Dan, this is mixed light. That's mixed light, yeah. Wow, this looks this looks great, man. Appreciate Jeez, it. yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yo, so if you guys didn't know already, everybody's switching to drift. Terps are a really big deal in today's market, but most importantly, so is the flavor. So everybody's switching to drip and feeding their flavor. And if you want to switch to drip, reach out to us. Family at firstsmokeoftheday.com. Let us know. I want to switch to drip hydro. We're dripped out. We're right here, our favorite place to go. You know, where the pros go to grow at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online. If you're shopping for grow goods, First Smoke 10 or in store anywhere in the US. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there. Yo, we got a gift oh, from shit. Dr. Dabba. Excess. Oh, oh, that's nice. We got a oh, order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can a gift. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dr. Dabba, come on, man. The homie. Big things right here. And you guys are in a lot of shops. Yeah, I think like 70-ish. We were in a little bit more, but tightened down on like, you know, shops not paying and shit. So tightened down on a lot of Talk it. about that a little bit. Uh, that's a that's prevalent, man. The thing, I mean, especially when we're in the middle of the woods, it's like hard to like deal with that type of stuff. Like marketing for us, bro. I'm in the, like, I live in the, the mountains. So like any event, any of this type of stuff, it's like whole thing to get to and go to. And especially if you have to bring product because then it's the van and like, um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of shops not paying and then it's like what do you do right do you, you do, do pop up you know? on the shop and then even then then you're making a whole trip to try to collect and it's like yeah. isn't that the reason we went legal to not have to pop up on people exactly yeah ridiculous <laughs> you know what i'm saying is, you mean, know what you i'm know, saying that's part of it for sure but it's like yeah. you think you have a signed invoice and well you and think they would just have yeah. to pay but it's like some of them well and they already want pay. terms so you've already given them terms and then it's not coming in yeah yeah for sure it's Which not is, that they like hey that's, well, a, that's a whole nother thing the whole yeah. terms thing is a whole well, thing. and then like let's talk a little bit about it so one of the things that i see happening now is shops will run, ring up a big tab and it's it this is what i'm talking about is because guys like this have bootstrapped their life onto this and yeah, they give everything cool at all well they, and then they'll run up a 30 40 50 whatever it is thousand dollar tab because maybe they have a big name and you're trying to get to their market yeah you're giving them low pricing yeah. and then they take triple the amount of you know retail products sell it and then not pay and then what will happen is they'll rack up like a half a million dollar tab and then they'll get they'll change the name and say they change the ownership and then mm -hmm. just wipe the tab. Yeah, totally. And there's no way to really do anything about it um, at all. They literally use us uh, as a bank, you know, cause not yeah. only do we just like give them that for 30 days, but dude, it took us three months to grow it. Yeah. <laughs> like with, and you gave it to or, them at three, three times less than what they're exactly, asking. Yeah, yeah. So they made three times that, and then they still didn't pay the initial it's happening all over, man. All and over. It, yeah, it yeah. kills me because 
not to say it w wouldn't kill me with corporate growers and shit, but it really kills me when it's a bootstrap person who their whole life's banked on it and they're putting out great product at a great price. And people are like, why isn't the market like this? Why? That's part of it. Yeah. Part exactly. of it is like the shops want to play games. Some of them do. Yeah. So when you find a good shop, it's like. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of what why we are down to where we're at. Um, we definitely just try to go with the bigger shops that uh, maybe not necessarily the bigger shops, the bigger orders that have been working out for a long time. Um, and it's funny because it always comes back to the shops where there's like someone there that's from before, you know, like from before bro <laughs> like, fuck. it's just how what it do you is mean? just like not you know just from before to 2016 they've like they've been doing yeah it, you know like they know and they just you know it wasn't just the newest hottest thing let's see how this goes yeah it was something that they were passionate about or they got into and about it. you know yeah so what are some of the shops that you guys are popping in and like what type of do you guys do any events or do you pop we do, out at all we or? do events we do the hall flowers uh emerald cup um i was doing those secret sessions tough um in la the secret session la they, this year they're all in new york though they keep sending me the deck to come but i'm like Dude, i can't go to new york bro i got <laughs> fucking a bunch of weed like I, i'm that's the thing people forget like i actually grow weed like i have plants at home you know what i mean like at events hall flowers they'd be like oh you can't pack up early i'm like dude i i'm like everyone fucking else around me have fucking weed at home <laughs> like i gotta go dude i'm a farmer mm -hmm. you know um so the events are cool um i got my retail license so i do the pop of like the secret sessions and stuff were super cool because i could roll down with my van break out my iPad with my crew, sell fucking to everybody mm -hmm. and come home and kill it. You know, like the secret sessions. I mean, shit. It's we, crucial to do, do that when you're where you are. Yeah. We would do 10 to 20 grand at secret sessions in one day where Emerald Cup now is like before 2016, I would do like insane numbers at Emerald Cup. But after, you know, it's like, what now, do you think about that? It's uh, changed a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, before 2016, you know, it'd be like, oh, how many do you want to buy? Cup? Oh, what, the what do you Cup? think about Emerald Cup now? Um, I mean, I haven't entered it uh, since before legalization. I haven't uh, had a booth at it. It's I had the, my first booth at it at the last one since before legalization. Right after legalization, people like me couldn't even enter. Like, you know, they were... not for sure. You know, like I feel like you know, feel like it went downhill. Oh yeah, I agree for sure. I mean, I I probably won't ever enter. I mean, all I feel like all the events have gone downhill. Hall of Flowers from the from when I first started going to now, never been. It's just you know like it's it's hard out Since there in times, the industry, like so it's making days. it hard for those type of things. Yeah. And plus, it's hilarious because at all those events, you just like we'll start seeing people yelling at each other or fighting. And it's because someone's yelling at someone because someone owes someone money, and <laughs> it's just like crazy. You're just like crazy. come on, guys. <laughs> it's like being all at, those events you'll see like, like at a fucking fair. Or it's some shit, so like funny. Carnival. It's crazy because it didn't used to be like that when we we used to do Chalice and the, like the, some of the old high times events like i feel like it was there was a lot of camaraderie and partying and hanging out and like besides business it was I, that's the part i miss most about like this business is like the camaraderie and yeah. like the family it kind of felt like we're all totally. we're in this together yeah because it was so easy you know and then it got hard and you like i don't know why it's because it everyone's hard. making a lot of money yeah everyone's everyone's making a lot of money you have to be nobody special to make yeah. a good amount of money so you got a smile hard. on your face yeah yeah it starts getting hard people start doing a little extra you know and then it comes to the point where it's like boom 2018 now i'm selling spent trim that's already run to my homie, <laughs> you know, you, you actually remember when that started. Like, Fucking CBD like, packs running that's around. That's it. Got to that. <laughs> Spraying turp packs. Like, yeah, really. So you know, I don't know. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> what What do you feel about that now? About uh, the, you know where the community is at and and what's in store for the future. Um, I mean, I think it's gonna. I don't know. Um, I think people that can just hang on will still will like still be fine. Um, permits like mine will never exist in other states. Like you're never going to get a homestead permit like people have in Humboldt and all these other places. Um, so I think if people can just hang on, then um, things could, you know, change for sure. Um, but it's definitely hard to like, it's hard for people in the mountains, like, a lot of these big companies don't even grow weed. They're just brands buying from people like us. And it's because the marketing is like the main thing now. And it's like what everyone in Humboldt is the worst at doing. Like, you know, I hate the marketing stuff. 
like I just was like lock me in a garage making oil and growing weed and like I would, those days were our, you know but. it's crazy because like <laughs> your model is probably like most of America's model should be where you have your yeah. home base and then you your most of your work can be off like right there on property or close to property and That's it's how like it was in before in medical days yeah. literally the medical days is what i have at my property with you just doing it all at your spot and that you know if they just like let everyone in humboldt do that from the beginning it would be so much different so much different i think which doesn't change much for them for them to allow that, they can still enforce so much of the other laws that they're worried about enforcing. Yeah. You know, it's like it doesn't affect their bottom line. It actually opens the door for people who are legacy and who yeah. have been doing it a certain way and perfected that way. You know, mm -hmm. that's why I think it's it's to your advantage. You're so young, too, because you're adaptable. You know, uh, I think being that age, you've up there, you're really like, OK, well, yeah, we'll bend to the left now yeah. and then we'll move to the right. And then whatever you got to say, will be at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people that have been doing it for a long time, they're just tired. And once that stuff comes, like, I totally understand. I see it like they're tired because they've been doing it for 20 years, 30 years. Whatever. And then you're like, now I got to change everything mm -hmm. and I'm going to risk everything again. Again, Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot for a lot of people. It's a lot for a lot of people. What what are some of the things you're doing to keep innovating and creating space for yourself within like these markets now? Um, I'd say probably just a lot of being involved at every single level. Like it's at my spot. So like I feel like that's just like the biggest advantage. Like you're living it well yeah it's like a farmer of 160 acres of grapes like there's all even if it's 160 acres there's like a farmer living there you know where mm -hmm. like you just there's so much stuff that goes on after hours with these plants that like you know a corporate place it's five o'clock everyone clocks out like no one's going back until the next morning you know I mean, you guys grow weed you know how many things go wrong at nine o'clock at night where a compressor mm -hmm. fails on the ac or like something you know one piece of equipment doesn't work or whatever most of the time, the stuff that goes wrong will happen after hours or yeah. before hours. Yeah. 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 So um, being there to um, dial that in, do that type of stuff. And then, uh, yeah. What's the future looking like? Any ideas or any plans for any multi-state operation, think, stuff like that? Like, where would you take it if you did? I think I will always grow and cultivate in California and it would be when interstate like lines open up. Um, people are setting up facilities everywhere and it's great, but like, you know, California grows like 80% of uh, the United States uh, ag or whatever. Like that's mm -hmm. a big portion. I think a lot of it, we can do it cheaper with the sun, the environment. Um, and it's better. Yeah, I mean, it's not better, but you know, like the climate, the, the, uh, it can be done um, a lot more efficiently in california so most favorable climate in the, the country most favorable I would climate say. in the country hands um, down yeah so i think it would just be that Maybe plus like i don't want to like though. it's you know especially term management it's like my house so like i want it to like i can't have someone like give someone the name to grow in another state right and like i am expanding but like all my expansion is literally in willow creek so it's mm -hmm. like my property is in the mid middle of the 10 minutes of all the other properties so i don't i would never want to like go to Santa Barbara or like Lake County or like, cause I wouldn't be able to be there. I feel like being there is so important. I think we might have to dub you the king of Willow Creek. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta oh, come man, see you my got fly the you, You're in the runnings for yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't know. Bill might come down off the hill and say <laughs> right. different. No. I'm from Willow Creek. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. yeah buddy. Yeah. Oh, man. That's man, funny. so what what about future collaborations and stuff you got in the works? Um, so I do packaging for a couple other brands like um I do a couple dispensaries like house products, main stage and sack. I do all their pens, solventless pens. Uh, Pine Park, I do all their rosin. Um, they have a podcast, uh, Pine mm -hmm. Park After Dark, um, with Tim and Eric Kahn. Yep. Um, I do the green thumb bags, the green bags um, for Be Real, their brand for California. Um, and I'm going to start doing, we're, we're, we're talking about doing like hash holes and a couple other products for them. So that would be really cool. Um, we're actually talking about us being the only ones doing their California stuff. So that's, that's super cool. That's cool. It's just, you know, I can do it all there. Like, the benefit of just doing being able to do it all there like it's so much harder for people that can't do it do it all there at their spot 
Like there's so many different levels of where most yeah. people are just a farm or just a distro or just a, you know, so absolutely. Um, the micro business, it might sound small micro, but like <laughs> it's, it's big, it's big. Yeah. You can make it, make it pop. It's big. Is, do, have you learned anything when you're doing the tours and stuff with people? Do they point anything out that kind of like helped you out? Or I anything? have people that will definitely, I mean, my thing from the beginning is, um, you know, like a lot of people, they don't, they feel like they know everything they want, you know, they aren't open to like, I'll take the lowest person on my team. Like we'll have a, a meeting the, you know, the person that does it, even if it's the lowest person on the totem pole might have made nine out of 10 of their ideas might not be the greatest idea, but it's that 10th idea that saves you a bunch of money, saves their happiness, like whole, you know, so I am always, that's my mindset for sure. For sure. Especially like, bro, I have two employees younger than me. So like, I have to like be very communicative or else the, I've, I've in the past things can get, you know, you, you're telling I'm a bunch younger, of older people, I'm telling what, to older do. people what to do. Mm -hmm. So it's Man like, too. I have to be really communicative and also like really like strict woodsmen too. like, but I'm, you know, uh, everyone Mountain says they love Man. me as boss, but also, you know, like I just have to nip stuff in the butt right away where so other people might like not want to say it right away, you know, mm -hmm. but just, I've learned that over the years. Cause I necessarily didn't do that before. Um, and yeah yo first smoke family if you want to know where to get all the most exclusive stuff done for your brand at it's moodtrays.com use the code fsotd and they're gonna take care of you fast turnarounds low minimums and they know what they're doing high quality products where we get all our stuff done for the podcast at grinders trays rolling cradles all types of the new things that are dropping go check them out tell them the family sent you they're gonna take care of you appreciate it with the tours because i want to get into this People can actually like if I'm wanting to get into cultivation, I can come take a tour with you, thousand dollars, and yeah. I can pop up on your property with you yeah. and go through the whole the gamut whole of thing. like, yeah. I got some questions about this. What did you think about that? Yeah, we even wow. fed them like a shashuteri board, and they could try the products. Dab out. I'd bring like some sick rig out. I have a bunch of glass. I'd bring some rig out and let them try stuff. For sure, <laughs> that's epic. We need that tour. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, guys, dude. We're bringing yeah, you guys go. along. Let's go. We're going to the fucking Turb Mansion. You've been nice enough to come down here to LA Hell for yeah. us. Yeah. You guys got to get out to the mountain. Come up to the Turb Mansion. Yeah. Go up to Humboldt. Yeah. And check out the Emerald Kid, yeah. man. I want to see the spaceship. Because I've been yeah. seeing the tours and I right away was like, damn, that's a good idea. And I yeah. want to check that out. Yeah. It was cool. I remember my intro for my tours on Instagram. It was hilarious. Um, I don't know if you remember a DJ Khaled video when he's like, the album is dropped or like the album is here or whatever. And he like jumps yeah. in his pool and fucking yeah. underwater. He's like, the album is all, is live <laughs> or whatever. So yeah. I did the same shit for the tours. I was like, tours are live. Tours are live. Tours <laughs> That's are. Awesome. Jump in my pool in the backyard. I'm underwater saying tours are live. It was hilarious, brother. The next day we got like three, 400 inquiries. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. <laughs> it was crazy, it works, bro. Huh? It was crazy. DJ Khaled figured that DJ shit out. DJ Khaled, another one. <laughs> Oh, oh bro. Yeah, Cal, it's like I did that bro. and we did 60 million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking bro. Man, he's definitely got the marketing figured out. That's dope as hell. It was funny. Hand me some of that funny. rosin. I want to hit this funny. Dr. Dabber. It's Which one should I try? I'm gonna lace this Dr. Dabber up. Do we have a dabber? Right oh, there we go. Do there we have we a go. do we have a dabber? We get uh oh nice. The what it, the blade. The thermal blade. Let's go. I've got some orange slaps in here somewhere, which I definitely want you to try that one. You'll tell because it's soil long. grown, small batch, Humboldt County. This is the orange slaps right here. So this is uh, blood orange Kush, which is a strain I raged. Ooh, I love ago. blood orange. Just the slaps. That's a rare one to I, get I, too. I, I have so many like oh. old hemp con trophies and shit from that blood orange. That Damn, was, that, was that the smells shit. great, that was bro. The shit. Yeah, we did an acre of that blood orange Kush at the mill the first year. Sure, that smells like some and I potent I ran perfume or something. A blood yeah. orange like. That's a good one. Wow. He needs to enter Emerald Cup. I know it's it's crazy, but yeah, wow. he, you do great, Maybe man. Your shit's fire. fire. Look at that consistency, too. Let's see what else we got here. I have a gel trop that's Ooh. pretty crazy, too. There you go. Do some. That's the Dr. Dabber right there. We can fire time. Yeah. No, nah, this is actually uh, this yeah, little thermal Yeah, that is Dr. Dabber. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. This the is it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is the XS. This is one of our go tos. Push it back. Yeah, this is our our go to. I like it this because 
Oh, that's it nice. doesn't drip. That's nice. Yeah. So if you're, you could stick it in your hoodie, or you can put it in your pocket or your bag, and you're not worried about any of the the water getting yeah. anywhere. So gotcha. it's a good travel rig for us. It's like it makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah, those rigs like just man, the glass game was so hot, and then the ri- the electric rigs came out and just <laughs> and it like leveled <laughs> off and dro- dropped and leveled off. Yeah. And it, I mean, it was so hot that like you you were hearing rigs on average going for twenty thirty thousand. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, people were selling chatter and shit for like five hundred bucks an ounce. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> crazy those, how those like those correlation, <laughs> right? So, so that changed quick. Now the only one doing it is rosin guys. Right? Yeah, yeah that yeah. goes. Right, You're right. good to go when it's it ready. When yeah, it whenever it. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, that orange slaps is probably my favorite. Oh, I'm dry I'll pulling it. it tastes, yeah, yeah do you? Was. Okay. I'm dry pulling it. Tastes great. I think that one you have over there might be the gel drop. Yeah, it tastes great, man. To be able to Smells good. pick this dude's brain or like <clears throat> see how he's doing this right here to go on a tour on the property, not like a phone call, not like, you know, talking through dm uh, in person you're looking at it yeah. he's explaining yeah. it to you that's you're doing people like a super solid at a thousand bucks i mean if you had someone come out oh. to your situation and just look at it and try to and tell you what to do it'd probably be around ten thousand. yeah minimum <laughs> yeah you know so to be able to have a behind the scenes tour and then you come and explain the what, the why, and the how. The business side yeah. too, which is And then the be hard. able to reach out, which is dope. Have you have made some good relationships? Tons of good stuff? relationships. I just felt like it was a better way of like, or not a better way, but like a way that I could market out there where like, like I was talking about earlier, marketing's hell hard for us. It's going <laughs> places while you have all that shit is like so hard, especially when we are fucking six so hours bring people drive to you. away from- so people you know, come from cra- crazy places to check yeah, it out. Yeah, or what? Well, most places, most people came from out of state. Yep, dude, this Tons is exceptional. From out of state, um, yeah, exceptional. Yeah, this is this it. is exceptional yeah. hash. Bro. We definitely do a lot more of our breeding and a lot more of our focuses towards the you know, the, hash. the hash. If I'm a hash maker, if I'm a hash maker, I'm hitting you up, being like, "So what's up with the collab, dog?" Because <laughs> mm-hmm. this this flavor is crazy. I have rarely had anything like this. I can't Appreciate think it. back to any. And like people are like, "Oh, it's it's an orange, it's blood orange." No, this is yeah. very different. It's like it's, it's like like rind like the the you know rind, but like orange. almost bubble gummy mm-hmm. a little bit yeah. and like. Uh, candied i don't know this is great man this is phenomenal hash even those iso snaps right? yeah and dr dabber you, iso jar you got right there is that the gel drop maybe i think so take a look that's i didn't label any of them yeah this is the gel drop so this is this flower right here gelinade drop gelinade by trapaya that is um russell Chaw education up in well creek he bred that Ooh. it's a good buddy of mine it's just like a crazy terp, you know. I love like that it's, it's by tropa- Tropaya. Yeah. It's, so it's papaya times trop cookies mm-hmm. times gelinade. Times gelinade. So wow. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Because that papaya and gelinade together, that's a crazy yeah, combo. And now is. throw a little bit of trop. And it doesn't have like when you think trop, it's it's way more gelinade papaya with like crazy color. Yeah. Wow. Man, that smells great too. Appreciate it. And that's this hash. That's wow. that hash. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't quite cured, but Ooh. I had to bring some down this morning. wasn't quite ready. I can tell. I bring People <laughs> trip out about your hash. I already yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Like the the flower. I can't believe. Just just to be honest with you, I haven't seen too much mixed light that mm-hmm. looks like this good. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you and my man Dave prefer. Yes. Gardens. you guys yeah. are like yeah. running in the ranks with what can be done through greenhouse, but like not your ordinary greenhouse you know like you said water wall and all that yeah, stuff the only reason i even know what that is because we went by his spot and i was like, <laughs> what, You're like what the fuck you know yeah yeah definitely. passion yeah. something that i see between him and dave too is just that relentless passion dave's Holy a re- shit. yeah dave's a relentless guy too i can just tell <laughs> yeah you know and it yeah. takes that especially not just being an indoor grower but being where you guys are <laughs> relentless yeah i like. met him for the first time at that craft farmer sesh we went I, I went down to that craft farmer sesh um that was that was kind of like one of those old school events shit. there was one of the, there was one of those fights that we were, we were talking about earlier <laughs> Oh man! What the fuck Yo. happened to that? Would you put this on cleaning mode? Holy! No. <laughs> that bitch was. You hot, guys just hit huh? that hot, huh? <laughs> I don't know. This dude, no, it's, I think I just it's going rainbow. I mean, there. that's what we needed. Rallied right? up, dude. Yeah. 
Holy hey, shit. Shout out ahead. Dr. Dabber. Yo. <sighs> Fucking A. Jeez. What was that? What'd you dab us out with? Man, that, <laughs> that shit is phenomenal, bro. That got my mouth water and my eyes. <coughs> That's that lick your When lip I curves. see your flower and your hash and stuff, Ooh. I smile because I think of all the trappers <laughs> that would like at night when they go to bed, they pray about meeting someone like you because of your flower. I'm just being honest because yeah. your flower, like that put it, people are like, this is top end indoor. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's mixed light. Yeah. And then the rosin, sure. your color, the, the turbiness, the consistency of how wet it, wet it is. This is really nice, man. I'm, I'm loving to be able to try your products finally. Thank you. Yeah. We got pack ons over here still. Going. Over here <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Turpy, huh? Woo. Turp Mansion. We know. Yeah. You want another Turp one? Turp Mansion. Not, not on that temperature. <laughs> <laughs> not on that one, I right? Know, this is the one. Oh, man. That's hilarious. You make it down to LA much? Not really. Yeah. Not you don't really. get off the farm much. It's for it's, business and running yeah. both what, sides what of it. What about back home? You you go down to Santa Rosa and shit. Your parents still um, down there? I or? did. I did for Hall Flowers. I'll just, you know, I'll go down to those areas a little bit more, but um, pretty much just humble. Yeah. Pretty much just humble. You got a favorite place to Especially like this year, you know, take off to? Uh, Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go to Hawaii. The lady doesn't have her passport. So. <laughs> we go to hawaii <laughs> you're like it's either alaska or hawaii so <laughs> pick one. Or Florida, but, you know yeah yeah hawaii is beautiful isn't yeah it? for sure i like why i feel like if you're in cali it's the trip to do yeah like a lot of away. cali people go to hawaii you can go yeah. one way from san francisco just one you know boom five hours are there which which part do you go to um i like i like i mean i like all i like maui i like oahu um Kauai, probably the small islands maybe the best you linked um, up with any growers out there uh, i've seen a few like i'll do stash and dashes when i go mm -hmm. places and shit and you know people will uh in hawaii i've had some people show me their little greenhouses and stuff on when and after finding their uh their little stash and dash thing you know no the stash I, and dashes are fun going and going doing those i do those all the time on vacation yeah yeah hawaii is the best you're surprising like dude yeah they get found pretty quick especially yeah, you'll be yeah in hawaii <laughs> it's also cool to go somewhere and see where your fan base is and how fast they show up yeah. like yo like you don't realize yeah. that like you have a bunch of people in hawaii that are also passionate and watching what you do especially with what you're doing with mixed light because that's hawaii all day yeah like that's their goal totally and there's just a lot of people on vacation in hawaii too <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's that's that don't want to fly with weed out there right, so right? when you get yeah, there and you're yeah. like what's up like, with some oh, fire i found this i was like fuck i didn't bring anything yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. You're like, I need a half ounce of weed in the shrimp truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, man. You got stoned over there on that one, huh? Ooh. Bro, knock me back, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's good. That's, this is, don't uh, hit it on I would rainbow. call this invigorating right yeah. here. Like it's, <laughs> it'll, it'll get a hold of you. Yeah. For real. We got a Z cam. I didn't bring any of it. Skittles by cam that, oh. that definitely is. It leans to the cam side and knocks you for sure. Knocks you. How, one of the questions I had is, how do you balance having a family and and this business the way you do man because that's something we don't run into a whole lot at your level yeah that can be hard because like i always have people around so like you know sometimes the privacy like the my lady will be like there's always fucking someone here like fuck yes. you there's always someone here um so uh i try to we'll just travel more like uh, especially on weekends like i really try to have all the work done on other sites on weekends and not on my site um, now that I have these other properties I'm running, so that's been working really good mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. So no one is, is except us or at the house on the weekend. Shout out to her for being patient. Yeah, for sure. She definitely does, uh, you know, raises the kids and does, uh, does a lot for sure. Makes the mix, you know, does the garden. We have like animals, chickens. Um, we're about to get too many goats. Um, so I, I, I ordered or I got them for her for uh, Mother's Day, but we have, we're picking them up this weekend. Next that's weekend. dope yeah damn that's fucking awesome yeah, yeah. i can't wait to go hire girl some goats from yeah Day. some goats she and was kids. very happy <laughs> mini goats too they're a little bit all mini damn, that's <laughs> that's that's really tight. Tight. I, yeah <laughs> it's cool take a little micro dose shot they're like <laughs> yeah you're like <laughs> they're <"What>? mini man <laughs> yeah help cut the lawn you know goats. hopefully they just help cut the you lawn. can trip some people out with that right. toy size goats dude yeah. Yeah. i got these huge like, goats out there mini though we're talking like mini like <laughs> mini mini you know oh my god I, they got to be high pitched and everything 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's cool, man. That's it's I like just following your page too and your journey. It's it's one of my favorite things to watch because it's inspiring. Not many people are putting on all the different hats you are and then being able to consistently put out product, you know, like these strains too are all something that I'm interested in. You know, that's another hard part is like finding the right combination of strains besides growing them properly. You know, yeah. not not easy, man. Definitely have to start growing like way more strains because at first I'd put like th two, three strains in that spaceship. Now it's like each bench is a different strain, you know, so it can get crazy. Yeah, Definitely. it makes it more complicated. Yeah. How do you go through and decide your strain selecting process? Like what, what stays, what goes? Usually me and the team just smoke it. A lot of that. Some of it what are you will, looking will have for to do with, smoke it? you know, yield and ha like all that type of stuff too, but. Um, I just look for a wide, wide variety because I'm trying to fill so many different products. Like when I supply another brand too, they don't want the same strain I have in my brand, which makes sense, you know, because it could be different prices and like all that type of stuff. Um, so just have to have like, you know, that's why I say like now, like it's people do all these massive facilities. The people that really are killing it have the small like 220 lighters and their little brand with the fire, you know, like. Yeah. It's almost better. Like you can do numbers. Yeah. And it's and do a lot more with quality. Yeah. Than you can quantity, especially in this market. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Totally agreed. And I think you're in a great place because some of the OGs that I came up with, we used to always ask, like, where do you think it's going? You know, you have these conversations about where this this industry is going. And one of the big conversations that gets brought up is greenhouse mixed light, high end greenhouse, though. Such a high end greenhouse that you can produce basically almost indoor if not indoor flower out of there and what you can produce per pound and just the added terps like you say that your test your flower always tests higher in the mixed light mm -hmm. things like that so you almost get the advantage of indoor with the advantage of sun grown at the price and now you're able to put out rosin at a better price point flower at a better price point you're able to test strains at a better price point mm -hmm you're able to waste more space at a lower cost to yeah. find those keepers and yeah. to find that next wave the taxes are less you know like taxes on it, everything yeah, for sure definitely when you run it right because if also you yeah you can fuck up a, a big mix light run and it can definitely or you run the greenhouse wrong and don't have mm -hmm. someone changing the settings between summer spring fall because you can really like if you, you can really control those things to um, really make them efficient if you know what you're doing if you're a young grower out there, young businessman, even if you're a young guy that's in a brand and you're like, I want to do something like this, like any advice to someone like that could get into where you are now. Just keep going. Just, you know, start small and keep dialing in what you have small first and grow from there. That's, just, you know, that's how any business honestly really should go. You know, no one should just take in a massive investment, not knowing what the fuck they're doing. You should start slow and like grow with your little bit of profit you know, <laughs> and do your own thing, be your own boss. Organic growth. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Double down on yourself, be efficient and stay persistent. That's what I got out of this, man. The Emerald kid. For real. It's been awesome, man. You got any shout outs or anybody you want to um, go up the I team? I shouted out pretty much everyone. Uh, shout out to Jordan, all my team and Tony, uh, Jamie, um, uh, Don. Um, I've, I got Jesse on a new spot. We, um, yeah, we, we have a couple new projects this year that are pretty cool. So I'm excited. Um, yeah. If I'm landing in Cali and I want to try Turt Mansion or Emerald Kid product, where am I going? Main stage and SAC. Yeah. I'll have everything or come to Humboldt because we have retail and we'll sell it right to you. Boom. So if you're in Humboldt, you need yeah. help the Emerald Kid. Yes, sir. Go and get shout your tour, out. Yes, yeah. sir. Business tours or the consumer tour. <laughs> yeah. And soon we're about to get the first smoke of the day tour. Yeah. And shout out Main Stage Sack, always being for the growers. Yeah. I love that they, they're they showing up for growers because I hear a lot of people going back and do it. I haven't done business with them, but I keep hearing people like, yep, that's the spot for us. That's one of the spots for us. That's, that's cool to hear. Shout out Green Dog for that. I know mm -hmm. he's partnered in that spot. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Shit, nothing but love, man. Appreciate it, guys. For Emerald sure. Kid. I Make sure you go check right. out the Turf Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Super lit. Yeah. For real, for real. Episode 96, man. First smoke of the day. We're out. California Appreciate dreaming. Peace.